Germany's far-right Alternative for Germany Party, or AFD, is nominating candidates for European elections next year. The populists hope to join a grouping of far-right parties within the European Parliament to strengthen ties to similar allies in other countries. Around 600 delegates have been attending the party's two-day convention in the eastern city of Magdeburg. Thousands of demonstrators have rallied outside, protesting against what they say is a dangerous turn to radical nationalism. A recent poll placed the AFD as the second strongest party nationwide. And the far right is on the rise across much of Europe. For more on that, let's talk with Hans Kunani, an associate fellow at Chatham House. Uh, Mr. Kunani, thanks for joining us. Why are, thank you, why are far right parties doing so well in Europe these days? Well, it's quite difficult to give a, a sort of simple answer to that, partly because there are, you know, there's a different context in different, uh, in different European countries. Uh, it looks a little different uh, in, in each case, uh, but also because uh, I think, you know, one has to differentiate between sort of long term factors. Clearly, you know, for the last decade, really, the far right has been rising. But then you get these kind of short term spikes, you know, which we're seeing, for example, now uh, in Germany uh, with the AFD. Um, so there are sort of some short term factors and long term factors. And then on top of that, you know, even if you even if we are talking about, say, the short term factors, you know, behind the rise of the AFD at the moment in Germany, uh, it's very contested. Different people have different views on this. My own personal view um, is that, you know, part of um, what's going on is that, you know, when uh, political contestation in a democracy shifts these cultural questions around, you know, identity and immigration and Islam, um, then the far right tends to rise. The deeper question is, you know, what's driving that shift uh, you know, to cultural questions away from economic questions. And there are different ways of, mm. of thinking about uh, what's going on there. And just to sort of get into the sort of mainstream situation for a moment, a lot of the traditional conservative parties are sort of hearing a siren call of the far right, aren't they? So even if they're not necessarily in power, their ideas, I think, are, are spreading. Is that safe to say? That's exactly right. And it's really important to say that, I think, because sometimes there's this tendency just to focus on the numbers of, you know, far right parties rising or declining. And so, for example, uh, last weekend, when Vox, the far right party in Spain, didn't do so well in the Spanish uh, election, some people thought, well, that shows that the far right's declining. You know, this is a hopeful sign. But actually, what we see, as you suggested, is that centre right parties, you know, and even actually some in some cases, centre left parties are increasingly uh, mimicking the far right, particularly, as I say, around the, these, 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 these issues around, you know, identity, immigration and Islam, both kind of copying their rhetoric, uh, but also, you know, uh, copying their, their policies. Um, and so there's a way in which the far right can win, even if they don't actually win, if you see what I mean. Understood. Thanks for that insight. Hans Kunani from Chatham House.